I was feeling a bit under the weather and I thought, let's give myself one of these lateral flow COVID tests just to confirm that I've not somehow picked up COVID, even though I am vaccinated. It came back negative, so it's just a common regarding cold. However, I thought uh, that these were quite interesting, so I've found out how they work and I'm going to explain how they work now. I'm also going to explain how the test is done. So to do the test, you get these little dropper bottles and you get a carrier solution here. You snap this off and you pour the small quantity of carrier solution into this bottle. You then, and this is absolutely the worst bit, you get this little cotton tipped swab and you have to stick it into the back of your throat, uh, throat that's a tonsil area. I, I don't have tonsils, don't know, or, or that area. And then you rub it around either side. That's when you gag. It just about made me throw up. <laughs> then you stick this up your nose uh, and you twirl it around in one of the nostrils, but you have to push it right far to the back and you'll probably sneeze as well. It's very intrusive. Once you've got your sample of stuff, you place it into that liquid and you press it around to really mix it in with that liquid. And then once you've done that for about 15 seconds, you squeeze this little plastic tube and then you drag it out so it squeegees it off the pad and you end up with as much of a concentrated uh, dose in there as possible. I'm keeping this pad, I'm not going to contaminate it because I, I want to keep that test. Then you pop this lid in and you have a little squeezy dropper bottle, quite clever. You put a couple of drops into this reservoir here and it starts the process of wicking along inside. And after about 30 minutes, uh, you will have an indication, either just the C, a line will appear, or T for a positive confirmation, and the C, which is the confirmation line. But let's take a look inside this bit and see how it does that. Clue. It's incredibly clever, but strangely simple as well, and has a lot of connections with pregnancy tests that are doing the same for a hormone. She so popped the lid off. Let me zoom down in this and just show you. Actually, you know, I've taken a picture I could show you, but I shall zoom down. I shall zoom down and show you what's in here. In fact, I'll just zoom right up to here so you can actually see the real thing in a closer vicinity. So here's a pad that takes a liquid, it soaks along, and then it goes to this sort of waste pad here. Right, tell you what, let's uh, bring in a picture, and uh, I'll show you the whole process here. So inside is this wicking pad, and it's formed of multiple materials, multiple layers, with chemical impregnations in parts of it. When you put the carrier liquid in with the potential virus, it lands in this area and it absorbs into this largish area wicking pad, which is quite thick, and then it starts wicking along the sort of blotting paper up to the other end. As it does so, it passes through this zone. When it passes through this zone, it has sort of molecular keys with dye on them. And by dye, I'm, I'm actually talking like gold molecules. It's a tiny, tiny, infinitesimally small amount of gold, but enough to create the sort of the red lines that are seen. So as it passes through, if there are uh, the virus particles, it latches onto them with that marker dye. It then continues up through two areas which, has which have molecular keys. The first area is the test area. And if the molecules do have the virus, then the virus is trapped onto these little test keys and it makes the dye visible at that point. It causes a concentration of the dye. It then continues up and there's another set of keys that will just generically latch onto everything else as it passes. And the whole point of that is to show that the whole process has happened properly, that the chemicals were right and that the whole process did go through this zone to actually display the test. The liquid then continues into this pad and that is just basically the waste pad where it just collects all the residue. And that's fundamentally it. Just by the fact that these antibodies, this, these little keys that latch onto that signature uh, will make the line visible, that is fundamentally how the test works. It's very clever. Very strong hints of the blotting paper, the sort of the filter paper chromatography, if you remember getting that at school. I don't know if they still even do that anymore. But they've got other versions of these that can uh, do multiple tests at once. So you can actually have a whole load of lines that as the liquid pass, it will run a whole load of tests. And it's not just things like, it's not just that sort of 
mucal stuff in the carrier liquid. You can use urine in them. You can also uh, extract the... When they put blood through it, they separate the red cells from the white cells. So the actual, just the white cells, the colour doesn't interfere with it. And that can also be used in similar stuff like this. It's very clever, very neat. And you think, you know, it's so simple, but in reality, that simplicity underlies the fact that the scientists have engineered these molecules to lock on to a particular key signature of the virus. It makes it very clever. So if you're wondering how these little tests work, that is how they work. It just seems so simple, just that liquid flowing along blotting paper. But the science behind it is incredibly sophisticated and very impressive.